Hey guys, we're here on the Miss Pass. How do you like that intro? I'm pretty excited about the new intro. It just makes it all that much better. I'm Alex Goff. We're in the Flow Rugby Studios. And Michael Reed from the Austin Elite is with us today. We're just sort of... Um, you're less a guest as you're just filling in as co-host because Adam Armstrong can't be bothered to be here. But. Well, thank you for having me on. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, excited about that. Um, we'll talk about the hair later. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> if you don't know Michael, Scrum Half for Austin Elite, right? Yeah. But uh, really... Um, you know, you and I first met when you were with the high school All-Americans playing Sevens in Vegas, um, and then you went on uh, well, to Taranaki Academy. Yep. Is that what we're calling it? Taranaki yeah, yeah, the Academy, Taranaki Academy. Right, yeah. Just to be correct. So tell me about that. So that's New Plymouth, New Zealand, beautiful town, USA. Uh, played a couple of games there in the 2011 World Cup. Um, uh, it's uh, It's not the warmest place in the world. It's a... Well, yeah? it can get pretty chilly okay. during the winter. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, during the summer, it's beautiful. It's absolutely perfect. Um, uh, very, very green. It's along the coastline, and uh, it's got all that volcanic soil, so sure. everything grows like a weed. Um, but, yeah, th um, through, the, through that academy, we, uh, we had one of the best uh, stadiums in New Zealand. It's been ranked one of the top stadiums in the world, actually. Is that's the same stadium that's, that you yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. great. That was the yeah. one where, you know, Mike Em... Uh, Mike em Paul Emmerich, Mike Emmerich's the hockey announcer. <laughs> Paul Emmerich intercepted that pass and slid in on 9-11, saluted the crowd. That was that place. Yeah. So pretty, pretty nice. Um, also, little known fact, New Plymouth was the site of some of the scenes for the last Samurai movie, The Cricket Ground. They had a battle scene in The Cricket Ground. Yeah, that was, so. I saw some of my friends from... Uh, Oh, yeah? Yeah, back there, uh, setting Snapchats and, and, nice. and putting it all over Facebook, so... Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I, like, I like that. Yeah. Uh, um, also, and, and, and I, I just think this is funny. And, and, um, when I was in New Plymouth for the World Cup, we got, some of the journalists got a tour of Mount Taranaki. We didn't get to go up it too far because it was foggy. Um, but they had this whole presentation. They were talking to people about what Mount Taranaki means to them. It, it sort of looms over the city. It's pretty cool. And, and they go, and they're talking to a guy, and it's Graham Murray, dairy farmer. Now, if you're not a student of rugby history, <laughs> Uh, you don't know. Graham Murray was captain of the All Blacks. Graham Murray uh, was one of my idols growing up. He, um, he also was a man of principle because he refused to play against South Africa uh, when they banned uh, um, non-white players on their team. So he, you know, he, he would stand, I mean, he was like a rugby god, and they list him as dairy farmer. Which I think is hilarious. Well, it's, it is, it's small town. It's a very, very small town. And uh, that's, it's how people <laughs> make their living over there. And they're just hard workers and uh, live off the land. So and you can't fault them for that. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great place no, to true. live. So Nice. Yeah. What did you learn there? Uh, lots of things. I learned yeah. <laughs> a very many things. Um, but I think one of the most important things that I learned was the um, the team aspect because Interesting. Um, I found that and I'm not bashing American rugby at no. all but you uh, teams tend to focus on one or two very good players right. and that's fine you can focus and you can build your game plan around those one or two very good players but you have to include everybody else in that game plan it, it, t rugby is very, very different to uh, any other team sport because it is a proper team sport. If yeah. one person's not working right, then the entire team can't function sure, properly. Sure. So that was one of my biggest takeaways in New Zealand because everything had to work perfectly and everybody had to be at that level and at that standard that for, in order for everything to work. No, it's true. I mean, it's the greatest team sport in the world, right? But the the idea we, we, there are plenty of teams we see around here that uh, that they've got a couple of great players, and then you know, college rugby it happens all the time, and, and the coach thinks he's got it all figured out, and then two or three players graduate, and suddenly they're losing because he doesn't understand that he didn't he didn't work to make the freshmen better and the yeah. sophomores better, yeah. so that 
you know, when, when you lose your... And your at the same time, yeah. it's also, yes, you can have one or two really good players, but you have to tell them to teach the other boys as well. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So you, you did that. Now, at the same time you're doing this, your dad, uh, Robin Reed, um, and full disclosure, he, he's been supportive of some of the stuff that, that I've done over the years. Uh, so uh, Robin and Salty Thompson, the high school All-American coach, were working on a plan for something, right? And you, yep. you, you predated this, but... Yeah, so well, yeah, while I was uh, going through the high school American system, uh, my dad and Salty, they always um, had the had the idea that in order for American rugby to progress and uh, uh, get to the point that it, it needs to be to be competitive for uh, with the rest of the world, it needed to have um, academies and they needed to unify. Because, I mean, there has been ca academies all around the States, but they've never been unified. And what, what, are, they, what are they teaching? What, what are they concentrating on? Yeah, but I mean, the, the, yeah, that's yeah, fine. But, you know, the, but yeah. if, if they're not all talking, then yeah, they're useless okay. because they're only funneling their information and their and their know-how, which is great, but it's only going to that one town or that one okay, sure. area. And then all of that knowledge is just being kept there and not being shared. And, and those players, not just the knowledge, those players are just standing or sitting in that one place. And, you yeah, know, and, they're, okay. not, and they're not getting the opportunity to get seen elsewhere. They're not getting that opportunity to um, represent their country at a higher level. And that's not and that's not their fault. Like I was I was stuck um, in I was, but I was also at the same time I was lucky enough that I got seen. But that was but I had to travel. I had to go down to life and I and yeah. I was actually picked up by Scott Lawrence. But I had to travel and I, my dad had to pay that expense for me yeah, to get there. Right. Not everybody has those opportunities. And where my dad take, take the coach to the players more a, a little bit. Y yes, take the coach to the players, but also have um, coaches everywhere players are instead mm, okay. of taking one nice. coach and taking it him yeah. that one person because America is huge right like I, I, it still boggles my mind <laughs> I, like I, like uh, in back in South Africa oh let's quickly go down to Durban it's a six hour drive and it's a, a big chunk of the country you've just right. passed uh, we in, in Virginia where I, I played a lot of my rugby we drive for four hours and we'd be like all right We've passed maybe a little <laughs> half of right. Virginia, little, little and I'm just like, that's ridiculous. Yeah. It just blows my mind, and especially now in Texas, yeah. we, yeah, right. we drove for we about drove eight, day. nine hours, and we still went outside Texas. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it's just about, so their dream was to bring a, an academy to every large city mm. so that those players had an opportunity to be seen by those players, uh, by those coaches, and those coaches could then refer them to the uh, representative level, and then maybe through, uh, maybe to represent USA at a bigger level. Interesting to me about this, though, is that you have someone with a little bit of money and and a, a, a vision, and I run into a few of these in the rugby world, and most of the time, what they do is they say, "I'm going to put money behind." One team, we're going to well, seven team, fifteen team. I don't know, but we're going to tour this, and we're going to go to the Sri Lanka Thirteens tournament or whatever it is. And the money guy sort of strides up and down the sidelines. Maybe he's coaching, you know. He just, but he, but he focuses on one team, sort of like this idea that I'm going to create this super team that's going to go win. So <clears throat> your dad, Robin, says, I think we need to work on basic skills. Who does that, right? Nobody does that, and I think he, that he coached my high school team for a very long time. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, he, yes, skills was a very big part of everything he did, but a lot of the things he did, I didn't agree with. That <laughs> I wanted, I wanted to make him run around the post multiple yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, of, why not? But um, yeah, I mean, he he does have that vision where he wants. Um, he wants America to succeed in rugby. He didn't just want, I mean, like, yes, he wanted my team because I'm a son, I'm, I was on the team that he sure. was coaching. He wanted that team to succeed. But in his, my dad's always very bigger picture. He wanted my team to succeed, succeed as well as the country to succeed. So he he invested in, in high school Americans. And I was yeah. lucky enough to go on some of those tours. 
Um, and and now he's investing in in high school rugby again, not through high school Americans, but ERA. Yeah. And in, in a sense, ERA is touching or reaching out to more areas. I mean, it's still growing, and it's not yeah. nearly where he would like it to be. But it, in sub, in some senses, it, it is um, reaching more corners of the states because with high school Americans, there was only a, when I was playing, there was only four or five coaches who would go out and scout. And four or five coaches to scout the entire no. United States it just isn't feasible. And then, the, and then you find out, you know, they, they pick the high school Americans or the U19s or whatever, and, and it's like, well, who's available? Who can, who can afford it? Or, you know, who will be there? And, and sometimes the, the choice is, and I don't want to denigrate what Salty Thompson did, but sometimes it'd be like, yeah, he can't see everyone. So he's got somebody who says, yeah, I can do it. And then you go back to that club because the coach was supportive, and then you go find someone else. You can't, but you don't find someone who like can, well, might come out of nowhere. And um, you look at someone like Enoke Wakavese, who comes out of the Bay Area and maybe uh, doesn't know, you know, in another situation, doesn't know that he can do these certain things, and there's a mechanism that will allow him to do it. Yep. And then and then blossom out of that. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's, it, it's cool. Now, there are, other, there are still other academies out there. Yeah. Um, and there are some people with different models. Uh, do you think they can coexist? Yeah, yeah. Yes, definitely. The, the only thing that I see is becoming a problem is them not talking. Mm. If they don't talk, then they're never gonna, they're never gonna coexist. They're gonna bash heads mm -hmm. and they, and they're not going to like each other. And that's ex exactly the opposite of what rugby truly is. It's a okay. team sport. Everybody's yeah. supposed to be working together. And, and no matter how much you want your uh, academy team to beat someone else's academy team, it really doesn't matter. Yes, in, in that game it matters because everybody's trying to get better and everybody's trying to be the best. But the end goal is for USA to have better players and for them to be competitive in World Cups and against not yep. just the Americas, but your, the European teams and the Southern Hemisphere teams. If they don't talk or they fight, then the players pay for it. Right? Yeah, well, they, they, they not necessarily they pay for it. They just lose out on well, opportunities they lose, yeah, that they, they right. would have been able to um, uh, well, participate in. We've had players who played for ERA team and then turn around and they go play for Atlantis. And then suddenly they're on the, the North American Lions going to Dubai yeah. and they're back on ERA again. It's... That, I think that's great. I mean, the player should go play for whoever he yeah. wants. He's not contracted. No, no, that, no, and that's the beauty about it. Um, in, in New Zealand, it's, it's, it's exactly the same thing. You can go to one, if you're good enough, so if you're good enough, you yeah. select it and then you go and you train. If you want to move to, I was in Taranaki, if you want to move to Auckland or if you want to go uh, down to Wellington, like the, the opportunity, opportunities for me to move were there, but I really liked the system that I was working in Taranaki. So cool. There's that's you've there's always as in rugby gives you options, and that's the most amazing thing about it. Because I've travelled all over the world, and I've just played rugby. Yeah, that's good. No, that, it, now now you say played rugby, and I think one of the things about this is uh, the idea about training. So era started as a training environment, mm -hmm. and kids would they would uh, go on a Sunday every you know every Sunday through the fall or whatever. And they'd be working on basic skills, and they develop out of that. But it's grown. Uh, in, uh, you know, they've also had their multi-day camps and things. But now we've got teams playing. Now, do you think that's a good thing? Do you think do you think that's inevitable? Because a rugby player wants to play games, or should should we at some point be thinking about situations? And we'll get into it with the team whose logos on your shirt about this, but. The idea of training and preparing, and there's a time for that too. Yes. So. Uh, yes, there there is, but um, the the best way to learn is to lose, and you're not <laughs> going to lose in a, on a on a training field. Yeah, yeah. You're going to lose when you're playing against another team, and if that other team is, uh, so if you have a region and you pick players from the different academies within that region, and you pick an all-star team or whatever you want to label it and you play another region because within those two regions they're not going to be very far apart whereas yeah. some 
uh, uh, California um, academies and where I'm from, Virginia academies, okay. it's just not feasible, right. especially at the high school level. Sure. So if you have regional competitions or games, uh, I see every benefit in the world from that because you're only going to learn from playing. And yes, you have to teach them the basics first. I'm not saying chuck a jersey on them and send out okay. someone who's literally been playing for two weeks. It's just not going to happen. You have to teach them the basics. And once you get the, a, a core group of players from individual academies, then you can start building a team and then it can start becoming competitive. But that's far in the future, I think. Right now, we need to still be building. And yes, we can play games now, but I don't think that they're going to be as competitive as we want them to be. Okay, interesting. Now, we're going to lurch our way clunkily to the next topic by saying... I can talk about Euro. Yeah, day. okay. Yeah, no, it'd be <laughs> great. I mean, uh, I, like, I, w I, I guess I'll sort of finish by saying I, I enjoy following the teams. I, I think that there is a benefit from it, and you do, you're going to see in about five years, you go, you track down the U.S. national team and see how many era players are in there, yeah. and they're going to be a lot. Um, we're already seeing that in college. And I mean, the amount yeah. of tours that they're going on now is, yeah. is crazy. I wasn't, I wasn't uh, able to go on You didn't get to go tours. to Vancouver? I, no, I've never been to Canada, no. so. What? Yeah. It's attached. Uh, anyway, it's up there. It's <laughs> way up there somewhere. What's, what's north? North is that way. Um, you're, you're on the Austin Elite. Is another team in this sense. The, um, the, uh, the teams in Major League Rugby are trying to balance preparation with games, looking at an April kickoff. Uh, we've had some teams, Houston Sabercats, playing a lot, playing pretty much every week. Yep. Um, I kind of feel like they're trying to build a brand. They're trying to get people to the stadium, and here we are, we're exi we exist. Okay, that's a bus uh, partly a business decision. Uh, and then you've got teams that aren't playing at all. Um, we ran into this sort of the past weekend with the PRP uh, opening weekend, same deal. Uh, some teams play three or four or five, six games. Some teams, like this is our first game, league game, first game of the year. How do you, how do, you do that? Uh, so how do you do that? What are, what are you guys doing? Do you, uh, are you guys champing at the bit to play more? Or are you happy with it? M me or the team? Okay, well, you <laughs> personally. You can say you personally. <laughs> so, um, right now, uh, I'm not ready to play in a game just yet. Okay. But I mean, I've, I've just come off, well, I haven't just come off surgery, but I've had surgery in the past couple of months. And um, I'm doing all my rehab and I'm going through uh, all my strength and conditioning and getting my fitness levels back up because after surgery I wasn't allowed to do anything. Yeah, right. So um, right now, I'd technically, yes, I could play and I'd be perfectly fine playing. But for me, it's I need to get to a place where I'm comfortable. Where And right now I'm, compl I'm uh, more than on track to get where I want to be before our first uh, warm-up game or even our first season game. Um, so, for me right now, no, I'm not ready. Okay. But as collectively as a team, uh, you do hear one or two players like, "Oh, come on, man! I just want to <laughs> hit something. I just want to <laughs> smash somebody." Well, sure. And and n now that uh, we are uh, um, getting closer to the starting date, yeah. we are starting to do more contact, and we are starting to hit pe uh, um, bags and people. Yeah. Pe that's so good. and and it's good. Because people are getting, because we have been, we trained pretty much the last half of um, 2017, and it was just off season. So that's t it is tough. I mean, I, I don't so know. So we got all the all that rugby, frustration fun, building yeah, up. I'm sure where you're just running around on a field and passing, and um, yes, you get to get all your skills down and and work on things that you need to work on, but. It's, it's at the same. the same time frustrating because you're just running around on yeah. the field and so not playing a game. Are you envious of the Sabercats guys getting to play every week? Or you, is that too much? Uh, we were talking within uh, um, Flow Rugby about, uh, you know, it, it's too much, right? And, um, uh, so, Michael, we talked about that and just like, are some teams running themselves into the ground, stuff like that? And, um. <coughs> Yeah, first of all, it's great to be back. Still getting some of the uh, sickness <laughs> out of here. <laughs> um, but, uh, I mean, I don't know if they're wearing themselves out. Um, they're certainly playing a lot. I think it's good that they are playing. 
Um, cause they've been tra- they've been training for a while, but I think they have a big enough break where they're, they got time. They, I think their thinking of it was they're going to play, see where they're at, see where they need to get better. And they have a little, little bit of window time between the, their last sort of warm up game and, uh, the first regular season game to work on those things. Um, I also don't think that they're implementing everything that they're going to implement in full season as far as oh, like secrets yeah secret i think place. i mean i think so we'll, <laughs> i mean we'll find out but yeah um no, Yo, you, you always you always worry you're gonna cr- run somebody into the ground or have an injury but that's gonna happen but yeah that's, that's that could I'd happen be. in training yeah right all right so uh that an interesting uh part of that we we did have the prp on this past weekend triple header what, what do you think about a triple header kramer just uh I thought it was uh, some, camp out and watch three games. Yeah, I thought I thought it was great. I mean, I thought I saw some great rugby too. Um, looked like a nice day. What was it like out there? It was beautiful actually because it can get pretty cold out there at Treasure Island. It was actually very nice. Um, there's a lot of talent in the Bay Area, yeah. And there's a lot of there's talk about whether the Bay Area finally will get an MLR team. But um, I think if you talk to the the PRP clubs, it's about they recognize that some of their players will probably move into the next level, MLR. They don't mind that. They said, we're still going to be great, and we're still going to be, we're, they said, we're the best amateur league in the country. Um, I mean, how important is that, really, to have that, that kind of level as well? The amateur league? Yeah. Oh, no, it's, it's what the MLR is technically based on. Yeah. Because we're trying to make this step up to a professional era i guess yeah. you can call it um uh but you have to have that foundation and that foundation isn't just the amateur league it's also the schooling and the high school and then even um the under nines and the under eights because i started at under five yeah and if you don't have people interested at that age when they're starting to learn at that age and people are only learning in college they've got so much work that they have to catch up on that and I'm not saying that it can't be done. I've seen lots of players where they've been playing for two years and they just get it like that and yeah. they're just absolute beasts. But it's the very small majority that can do that. You, you, you also have people who are, you know, they've got a job, right? They're, they're not going to oh, they're marry, they've got kids, whatever it is, they're not going to pick up everything and say, I'm going to move to New Orleans to go play rugby. Yeah. Because uh, somebody's going to look and say, what, what are you doing? Yeah. Uh, or, and... and I mean, even with like the Eagles, I remember talking to some players who say, you know, I've got a really good career right now. If I, I pretty much have to quit or take less time to become an Eagle, but then I'm behind everybody else career-wise. I won't get promoted. I won't get all these things. It's a decision people are still making. Yeah, and I mean, it is a sad truth, but the, with you have to start somewhere. Yeah, and. The, in the long game, you want to be able to pay people so that they can take time off work or they can give up that uh, career altogether and f- just focus on rugby. That's the ideal. Because, uh, and that's where I want to be one day. I want to be able to make a career off rugby. I want to be able to live off the earnings that um, I'm getting paid. Um, where right now, it's very, very difficult to do that. <laughs> yeah, but, a little bit. But, I mean... Uh, I love the sport and uh, I've dreamt of doing this my entire life. So I'm sticking around and I'm putting in the hard yards now, hoping that further on down the line in the MLR uh, um, league that things do start falling into place and and the backing does come from the fans. And I mean, that, there's lots of stuff that have to fall, that have to fall in place and have to go smoothly to for everything to. Backing comes from the fans, but, you know, the, everything has to fall into place. Um, being older than you, I remember the days of the Super League. And one of the issues with the Super League was that the teams that were not in the Super League had kind of a problem with the teams that were in. You know, so they might say, well, we're better or, you know, you're going to take our players, things like that. But, but at some point, everybody has to talk. We go back to what you were talking about. Everybody has to uh, talk, if, whatever academies. The PRP, and if the ARP were better, I would say the ARP. It's got to be a little, like two more clubs than that. Um, they have to exist and they have to be strong. P- 
because if 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 some 22 year old phenom blows up out of Belmont Shore, well, he can play there. That's great. He can make the Eagles from there, probably. But what if uh, you know Austin Elite turns around and says, you know, well, we'd like to pay you to play. Uh, where do they come from if you don't have something else? Yeah. Right, so I guess my my question is, you know, do, I, I don't know if you guys talk about it or the, the idea of being, um, you know, being supportive of club rugby in general. It still matters. Yes. No. No. It does um, because that's where everything's going to have to come from. And yeah. beca and if not, then we're going to be start to and then we're, we're going to have to start looking outside of the states. And that's when things start to fall down. Because you're bringing yeah. players from different countries that are, I, I don't want to be taking our jobs, but right. that's essentially what's happening. Um, and if you're trying to build a great national team, you have to put in the time and effort with the, the amateur and, and the high school, and then even with the uh, the professional sides yeah. because that's where everything's gonna come from and if you start bringing in from other countries it's just I mean it, it's gonna it's gonna help but then you can't bring them into your national side no. so it's helping the the, the MLR or the um, the amateur side but it's not gonna help the country as a whole and I'm just and I'm not saying that we shouldn't bring in um, foreign players I think it's really great but we can't bring in too many. That's Makes where sense. the uh, academy system is important, setting that structure up and actually getting that rooted in the younger players, the, the, the younger people here, to get them into the system and uh, being able to identify those people earlier and giving them a, a better pathway to get, well, better pathway to get better, but... Um, no, I, that, that totally that totally makes sense. If if we're not if, if all we're doing is bringing in some other guy from France or from Fiji or South Africa, then that guy comes. He could be the greatest player, but then he disappears. Right now, ideally, we've had a few who have come here to America, and then their kids are great, and they settle here and they live here. Well, that's totally different. But the the ones who sort of parachute in and jump back out. Not really helping. By the way, can we have a beard off here for a second? I mean, <laughs> uh, wh oh. what are we thinking about? I mean, Kramer, you're actually quite trim and, and proper. I don't know about the little bit of a the thing on the front that's, of the that's hair. That's style. That is the style. That's I know. Style. The, I got my hair cut recently. They tried to they try to make me do that. It's like no, that's not <laughs> happening. But they, I, tell me about the hair. What's the decision <clears throat> making around the Michael Reed look? Because um, it's, it's 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 a look. Yeah. It's a bit Vikings, maybe. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I did have the the top knot last year. Yeah, and um, I, it it happened at the beginning of the season, and then I was like, oh, I can't, I can't cut it off now. It's my look, and people <laughs> people recognize, oh yeah, you were on top knot. Um, so I kind of kept it throughout the season, and then uh, I decided maybe I should uh, chop it off and. And look a little bit more if normal, but I mean, still, it's it's, it's out it's, there, but it's a, a little bit more normal. If you stick with <laughs> it long enough, maybe at one of the Austin Elite games, it'll be Michael Reed Wig Day, and they'll be passing out <laughs> Michael Reed wigs, oh, and everybody good. be wearing. Well, the, I mean, the top knot's kind of 2016, don't you think? I don't. I, I'm not sure. There is I'll say 2017, but that's when. No, I had no, it, that's so. when you had it. <laughs> there is there is a song out there. I can't remember who sang it called "Prisoners of Their Hair Dudes," talking about celebrities who just can't change their hair and like. ZZ Top and Dorothy Hamill and, and various people who just can't, cannot change their hair because the, nobody would recognize them anymore. Yeah. So you were in the danger of that. Don't yeah. date yourself. You got now. out of there. I, I'm a prisoner of my hairdo, I think. Maybe. Um, high School All-Americans. You were in High School All-Americans. Yeah. Uh, we were talking a little bit. Salty Thompson recently won an award from USA Rugby for services rendered to the organization which is great. Way to go, Salty, uh, who's been around for a long time. Uh, I got an email from him when I was writing for esports.com in like 1998. I'm like, who is this guy? He's sending me this thing. And, and we got corresponding then, and then I found out he actually knows what he's talking about. Um, and uh, I get the feeling, though, that that award is a little bit more of a, here you go, stop complaining, now go away. I don't know if you got that sense, but... 
Um, I, I think his award is very, very well deserved, and the amount of extra hours and um, work that he's put into all the players that uh, that he's um, been in contact with is commendable in every aspect. Um, he keeps in contact with guys, go through the program. I still get texts yeah. and, and uh, just little updates from Salty every now and then, just making sure that, uh, or making uh, contact just to see how I'm doing okay. and how everything's going. Um, and I've got a couple of coaches that do that, but th that those are the coaches that you know that sure. actually care about you and want you to go far. Um, as to... Um, you say rugby trying to move them aside. Uh, um, I can't really speak on that. Like right. I've okay. I've seen, um, uh, especially with my dad and and era and the high school Americans. I've seen a little bit of the inner workings because I've overheard phone calls with uh, dad, and um, it it can be difficult mm -hmm. sometimes. But that's also because my dad is. South African, and he has some out there views, but <laughs> at, at the same time, that yeah. those out there views can help in yeah. a lot of ways. I'm not saying that they're all very good views, but <laughs> a, a lot of them can help. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I love my dad, dad but yeah. <laughs> dad, really, just like <laughs> chill yeah, for a second. Yeah. So, um, well, I guess I guess he, the, I he guess has he has helped in a lot of ways, yeah. and and. Um, I'm not saying that uh, he got it right the first time. He made yeah. a lot of mistakes along the way. Yeah. But for, uh, the majority of what he's done and what he uh, what he's intended to do, he has completed, and he just wants to take it further with Era. Produced eagles all along the way, but I think also you look at the list of players he's worked with that, you know, backbones of major teams, mm -hmm. college and and and, and, club and the teams. amount of players that Salty has coached and brought up through the ranks that have been Eagles is, is mind-blowing. And now, I mean, Sean Pittman's now coaching the Eagles as a you know, forwards coach yeah. of the Eagles. So it's, it's like it's coming full circle. You, the, I, I guess, you know, I'm looking at this, and I, you know, it's great. USA Rugby is a little funny, though, because uh, sometimes people do, you know, they're doing great work. And it's almost like there's this institutional jealousy. It's not individuals. It just sort of bubbles up, and that person sort of, they, they can be taken for granted or something like that. And, and I don't know. I mean, it's just like when you give someone an award, that's great. And if there's an award given every year for somebody, that's great. But it's like it was out of the blue. They gave him an award like, okay, so, so it's obviously you want to be suspicious, like what? What are you telling me? You know, I, I, that's what I, that's how I felt, and maybe but I'm being cynical about yeah, it. Yeah. But I mean, like from my point of view, I was the first thought that I that came to my mind because my dad told me when he I think it was held in Colorado, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. My dad said he was off um, to uh, go watch, and uh, the very first thought that came to my mind was, "Wow, that's very overdue." Yeah. But yeah. and. But at, at the same time, you can look at it from the other, the other side. I choose things. to be cynical about it <laughs> today. Uh, you know, you, he's produced Eagles. It was interesting. Uh, over the weekend, so the Eagles beat uh, Canada. Halfway decent performance. Uh, four tries. Three of, them coat, uh, three of them scored by players. Salty brought in through the age grade system. Ryan Matty has got two. Henko Hermesh has got one. Um, you know, he plucked Hanko out of Nebraska, right? Just like some kid yeah. hanging out in Nebraska, we're helping his dad's roofing company. Bang, we'll put you in the U9, the high school All Americans. And uh, the guy is like, I mean, we were talking about this. Kramer is like, yeah. the guy's a beast. Yeah, it's. We, we were, I was showing you pictures of him from like four years ago, and he's like, wait, he still looked like a beast then yeah. playing against men. <laughs> it's uh, crazy One stuff. Of the, you had the article there talking about how. Um, he had to get a waiver to play because he was too young to play on the was the U nineteen U twenties yeah yeah um, I mean that's just the kind of structure he is you know like he is just all work man you watch him play and you give it, it's it's amazing honestly yeah. yeah you did you you watch the game the yep. USA Canada game what did you yep. think um, I mean s small mistakes but yeah. that's the um, 
the theme with all American rugby currently. Yeah. Um, and once we start to weed out those, I mean, was we've got the, the people in the positions, um, and we do, we do seem to have the depth in most of the positions. So we'll see because they're switching over some people. This yeah, week, so we'll yeah, see. that's that's true too. So we'll we'll get to view some of the uh, um, uh, substitutes, but yeah, it will be good to see um, how they handle some of the pressure because the boys did handle the pressure well in in that game because yeah, all all Canada could do really was start to hit people really hard because they um, they're not playing well <laughs> and that's okay and I think that you know Chile Brazil Uruguay Uruguay's playing great by the way yeah. but they're um, they have nothing to lose at this point so they're gonna throw everything at it and that's and then, when it can become dangerous right. because um, the United States is in a, in a position where they they are or they have been somewhat dominant so uh, a lot of teams can kind of take a back seat and think that they're right and they can relax a bit and that's when sneaky teams can jump mm -hmm. up on you and can take the carpet straight out from underneath your feet are are you the guy who calms people down when 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 the off the uh, you know the guy who goes off crazy on the team um, loses it are you the guy to calm it down or are you the guy who, or are you the guy losing it on the team so uh, this, yeah. is a, this is a great story um <laughs> we were in uh hong kong and hanku and i were we were um on the u20s at this time uh, and i've played with hanku for many years and i understand how he works and what gets him fired up and what <laughs> cal cal uh, calms him down and uh it, it was just a series of events that uh Hunger was told one thing and then told another, and just there was just mis miscommunication th throughout uh, about a week, and uh, and then uh, he got shouted at for something that he had told that he should have been doing, and uh, he absolutely lost it. So <laughs> I just I came over, I gave him the biggest bear hug, and just walked him to the corner of the field. I said, "No, bro, it's going to be okay." So I'm usually the one who's going to break it up, <laughs> but I have no problem jumping in the middle of. Um, the biggest forwards. Um, I, I, I stepped in between TT and uh, one of a uh, one of the big um, uh, English props when we went. Uh, it doesn't uh, seem like a smart move. It, it wasn't <laughs> the smartest of moves, no. but I, I broke it up. So that's good. It's good. So. You you can. Um, it's a good way to get a punch in the eye. No, it is a very good. Eye. And uh, I got I got a headbutt in <laughs> South America, and I had a black eye for a couple of weeks. So yeah, I've, got, I've had my fair you're, share. You're, you calm down, but you don't want to calm them down so much. You still want that fire going. Oh uh, right? no, no, with Hanku, there's yeah. never calming down all the way. <laughs> <laughs> and that may be that may be. I, I love him to death, oh but sometimes God. he can he can get fired up. Well, it should be exciting. We've got to get him in the studio at some point. We'll, yeah, get, him, we'll get him fired up. We just need a corner to put him in <laughs> in case he gets a little bit uh, too much. Uh, uh, are we out of time? I think, I think we're, we're out of there. time. Michael, yeah. terrific job. Thank Thanks you so much. Thanks, yeah. right. Thanks. The missed pass. Thank you, Kramer, as well. We'll see you next time. <laughs>